What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so picking up from where we left off in last week's video. Last week's video, we talked about extracting MIDI groove templates from actual MIDI files and then storing them as presets within Studio One. Now, one thing I just want to recap on really quickly, I've got a pattern part here, really, really basic. Let's just convert this to MIDI by clicking the G key and let's go back to the melodic mode and let's zoom this into view. When you're working with MIDI, each one of these pieces of note data in Studio One terminology, in other DAWs it's called note events, each one of these is representing a MIDI event of some sort that is triggering a sample. In this case, we're talking about an instance of Impact XT, so anything on C1 is triggering this sample. And this sample is loaded in Impact XT. And we have different kits with different samples loaded and you have the ability to adjust the exact in point. So when you're talking about extracting from a MIDI file, as we know, just drag and drop over here and then it takes on the actual name and then we can simply store a preset. Now, MIDI is very easy because you have musical data that is triggering samples of some sort. So it's very, very easy in terms of extracting stuff. But when we're talking about audio, it gets a little bit more complicated because although this is very easy to quantify in MIDI terminology, when we take a look at actual audio files with drum loops, it's a little bit more complex. So let's zoom both of these into view. I've got two different drum loops. Let's have a listen to drum loop one. Okay, now let's have a listen to drum loop two. Okay, so right off the bat, you can tell completely different feel. One of them has got a completely different vibe. The first one over here is really hard quantized on the grid, and this one has got some swing to it. Now, truthfully, I can tell just by looking at this file that this amount that it's offset from the grid here at specific points in terms of 16th notes, it's static, it's always the same amount. So I can pretty much guarantee that if I opened up the quantize tab, went into grid and I dialed up the swing that, uh, let me close the editor for a moment and let's have a look at it in this tab over here. As I'm starting to dial up this swing, you can see that my actual grid lines are moving. I would probably be able to find an exact amount that makes sense. So somewhere between, let's say, Okay, somewhere around 31, maybe 32. You'll notice that as I adjusted that swing, as a static swing value of 31%, that it makes sense against the grid here when I look at this drum loop against it, that swing value. If I move it back, it's hard quantized again. So that being said, let's just pretend and assume that this drum loop two was an actual performance that was performed by somebody and we were trying to extract a groove template from that performance because that's what this is all about. All right, so once we kind of make a determining factor of which drum loop we are going to extract the groove from, this is where the workflow starts. But before we go there, I wanna just open up Regroover Pro really, really quickly. If you haven't checked out this, um, I'm not affiliated with Accusonus. I'm not endorsed by them or anything. It's just an amazing plugin that allows you to essentially drag and drop loops. And it's got an automatic algorithm that kind of sorts things out for you. And then you have gates and EQs and stuff. And you can actually go through by using a, a workflow and, and isolate some of these individual elements. But if we listen to, for example, let me open this up and make sure that this mixer channel is not muted. If we listen to this, we have the different elements of the groove. So there's the kick, right? And if we were to listen to the snare, this plugin is just absolutely insane in terms of how, how amazing these algorithms are. And I can tell you if I had a couple minutes to play with this, I could extract the hi-hats, the kick and the snare to their own tracks with almost zero bleed. And I could split this stereo loop out into a multi-track. So, but if we take a listen in terms of trying to identify what the groove is and extracting a groove template from this, this stereo file is a combination of all of those elements. So that's something to just kind of keep in mind. So with all that being said, let's get to the workflow. It's very, very similar to the MIDI workflow. If you open up the quantize menu over here, and we have the option to choose grid or groove. If we go into groove, if we select this audio event and we drag and drop this in, 
It's going to automatically detect the transients, something we're going to circle back to in a moment. And it will place all these points. And as you'll see, it takes on the name. Now from here, if you were happy with this, we can do the exact same thing where we could actually store a preset of this group file. But there's a couple things that I want to talk about before we kind of jump ahead to that step. So the next thing that you would do is quite simply, after you've dragged and dropped this or loaded up one of these, you could quite simply just take this audio file and with the quantize menu open and the actual groove template extracted, select this audio event and click apply. But watch what happens here with this audio file in terms of how things are quantized against this. I'm gonna use shift Q to restore my timing. See what's happening here when I apply this? Take a look at this section specifically. You can see that things have shifted around big time. And the reason for this is because the actual transient detection points are super, super, super important when you're extracting groove templates from audio files. So let's use Shift Q. Shift Q will restore the timing. And in fact, we can also right click, choose audio, and we have the option to remove the bend markers altogether. It's in my recent items, so we'll use that again. Let's clear this out. The way that I end up doing this is I will actually do a transient detection manually before I drag and drop this in. So I've got a shortcut that we can do this with. In addition, we can go to audio and we can detect transients. I've got it mapped out to a shortcut here. And another thing that we can do is if we go to the audio band menu, we have the option to choose the mode. I always leave this on standard when I'm detecting percussion stuff and analyze this detects a transients. Now this threshold slider allows you to adjust, obviously, less or more. Let's open up our editor for a moment. So as I cycle through, these transient detection points are being placed at where Studio One determines that there's some transient detections to happen. One thing that's really important here is that you need to make sure that you're looking at these transient detection points because these transient detection points become the actual triggers for the groove template. So if it's not the way that you want them to happen and you feel like it's missing some of them, we have the option to add them in manually. Now you can either do this within the editor itself. So for example, I could switch to the Ben Marker tool and I would definitely do this with snapping off. And then I could kind of eyeball where I think some of these transient detection points should be like that. Move a little bit further along. I could say, okay, well, I want one over there. But the thing to keep in mind here is that you have to be really, really careful in terms of where you place these because these transient detection points are so perfect and because some of these minor nuances in this groove of, of groove extractions can happen between you know milliseconds and stuff like that you really want to make sure that these points are as accurate as possible so once you're happy with all the transient po detection points that have been added and again in this case i can just click this i'm going to switch to the quantize menu and then groove and at this point i would then drag this in when you're talking about quantizing either audio or MIDI, like we know, the way that this works is that it needs to quantize things that are close. If we're talking about a straight 16th note, it's super simple for me to, for example, detect these transients on this and then say, all right, we're in a 16th note. I'm in a 16th note grid. I want to set a quantize value and then I want to apply and it's going to just quantize the transient detection points perfectly. But the thing to take into account when you're working with groove templates is that it doesn't use a quantize figure in terms of the quantizing points. It extracts either MIDI note data or MIDI events, or in the case of working with audio, it's using the actual bend markers as the points. So if we drag this in again here, these are the actual detection points that it's going to quantize to. So what that means is that because we know that Studio One automatically detects the transients on this file, if we want to quantize to that, I'm actually going to do this ahead of time manually. So I've kind of updated this to have a couple more transient detection points that I've added manually. Let's select this audio event and click apply. And you can see that that worked a little bit better, right? Because we have transient detection points that are really, really close to each other, Studio One has quantized drum loop one according to drum loop two. I can do shift Q to restore the timing. Keep an eye on these ones in particular, right? We'll quantize that again. But you can see that in this case that it moved things quite a bit. Let's do shift Q to restore this timing. Why is that? Well, it's a case that the actual transient detection points were not lining up with each other. So for example, if I added a transient detection point with my bend marker somewhere about there, 
Now, this transient detection point would be quantized here, right? So I'm going to once again select this and let's clear this out and we'll drag and drop this into here. Now I'm going to select this and let's quantize this against this. We'll click apply. Now you can see that it didn't move this because it had something that was relatively close that it could quantize to. So when dealing with extracting groove templates from audio files, it is super, super important that you pay a lot of attention to the actual transient detection points that you're detecting. That all being said, another thing that's important is that after you've done your transient detection and your quantizing and you've kind of extracted that, one thing you also need to be careful of is you want to make sure that you're double checking everything. So in that case, we have the audio bend tool. Notice here that this is a tiny bit off. Now, in terms of where Studio One detected all the energies and everything, it's quantized it according to this. But if this were me doing this, I would manually adjust this and I would be wanting to pull this back. Now, because we have transient detection points or bend markers that are either upstream or downstream in this performance, if I move this over, it's kind of keeping everything locked down. Something else that you could do is you could say like, okay, do I want to take this transient detection point and do I want to move that? So this is just stuff you have to be aware of. Uh, in this case, I might say, okay, well, I wanna just pull this back to here. And I'm even just lining these up manually by eye. I would take a look at this one and be like, all right, well, maybe this should be a little bit more like that, right? So it's really about double checking all of this. Pull this one back just a little bit somewhere around there. Something else that you could do is if you don't wanna have this padded area, you could hold down Alt or Option, and then I could actually move the transient detection point here and then it's going to apply the time compression and expansion without kind of preserving the beginning of those transients. So once you kind of have a feel for how you want to do this, this is kind of the nuances and the intricacies of how uh, groove templates work in terms of extracting and quantizing to audio. Now, quite obviously, this is with respect to audio files and quantizing audio files against audio files. But the other thing that we know is that I can, let me clear this out, I can drag and drop this here, but now what I could do is I could actually take this and I could quantize this according to the groove clipboard that we have set here. So if I click this, I can do it in either the editor or the arranger, but watch what happens to this note information here or this note data when I apply this. Notice everything has changed. So let's have a listen now to this MIDI clip. And with our drum loop too. And if we were to have a listen to that pattern straight, So you always have to kind of be, you know, paying attention to what's happening. And when you're dealing with extracting groove templates from audio files, like I say, the transient detection that you're doing, detect transient shortcut, this is key. This will really determine how well your groove template is extracted. And the way that it's going to do this, for example, if I was to just create an instrument track right now, and if I was to just drag this file on here, Watch what happens with these groove detection points. Let me change the length of all of these. Let's make them all, uh, let's make them all a 30 second note, set all two. Okay, so the way that it works is it uses the beginning of the transient detection point as the actual MIDI trigger. So anything that's the very beginning of this transient detection point in terms of this padding. So if you have MIDI files, that is what's going to be used for quantizing against your MIDI files. Now in terms of saving these groove templates that we're recalling from MIDI files, this is really no different. Once you're happy and you feel like you've done your transient detection properly and you're extracting all of the key elements that are part of this groove, again, we just want to make sure that it's named correctly and we just drag it and drop it into the actual groove clipboard. And then from here, it's the exact same as last week. You can give it a new name if you want to, and you can sort your folders after the case, but this is the basics of it. And it's actually, once you kind of get the hang of it, it's actually really, really simple to be able to extract a groove template from an audio file. 
just basically doing a transient detection, making sure that you're adding if it's missed some of them and if you need to move some of them around a little bit. And then once you do that, just dragging and dropping it into here. But like I said, keep in mind that if you are quantizing another audio file, whether it's a bass performance, a drum loop, to the Groove Clipboard from this audio file, you need to make sure that you do your transient detection properly. And I always like to do that with both of the files over top of each other so that you know how things are being quantized and you know that the proper quantize or, or the proper transient detection point is being quantized to the proper transient detection point in the file that you're quantizing. Anyways, way more complicated and a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but there's really no simple way to explain it. When working with audio, it all depends on your transient detection. And if you want to do it right, you want to definitely double check anything that's been done automatically by Studio One. And before you drag and drop it and store that preset, you definitely want to make sure that you're having a look at everything and making sure that you have all the key hits that are part of the actual audio file that generate and help contribute to the unique timing or groove or soul or vibe of the file that you're extracting from. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.